Hi students, welcome back to Making Meaning. Today we're going to read some articles and we've been working on determining the important ideas. We've read two articles this week and we're gonna read a third today. Let's get started. All right, this article we're gonna to read today is called Giant Jellyfish Invasion by Ruth A. Musgrave. Feel free to read along with, the, um, with your packet or on the screen. We're gonna read this story twice. The first time we really want to think about what's going on in the story, and the next time I want to think about what are the important ideas from the story. This book also, or this article, also has great text features inside of it. Let's get started. Giant Jellyfish Invasion by Ruth A. Musgrave. Are aliens, which are creatures from a different planet, attacking the Sea of Japan? Not exactly. These gigantic blobs, which are soft, wet shapes often that are often round, are unwelcome visitors from another place. Called the Norma's jellyfish, the wiggly pink giants can weigh up to 450 pounds, which is 204 kilograms. They can be as heavy as a male lion. And they are swarming, which means crowding all in one place, by the millions. The super sea creatures normally found off the coast of China and North and South Korea, occasionally, which means sometimes, drift, which means move, east to the Sea of Japan to feed the tiny organisms called plankton. plankton. But now, a hundred times the usual number of jellyfish are invading the Japanese waters, and local fishermen are feeling as they are under siege, which means trapped and attacked from all sides. We're going to take a time to stop and think just for a few seconds. I want you to think about what is something that you have learned from reading this so far. We're thinking. All right, something I've learned is that there are so many jellyfish in Japan and parts of North and South Korea and China that are taking over. I can't wait to read more. And as you can see, there's a little map at the bottom right there. It says all arrows show the route to Norma's jellyfish. Okay, starting the next paragraph. The fishermen's nets are getting weighed down or even broken by hundreds of jellyfish. The jellies crush slime, which means covered with a sticky liquid, and poison valuable fish in the nets, such as tuna and salmon that the fishermen rely on to make a living, which means they earn money to, money to live. I want you to think, what have you learned just from that part right there? Stop and think. Take a few seconds. One thing I learned is that the jellyfish are crushing and poisoning the fish that the fishermen are catching. All right. Last paragraph. No one knows for sure what's causing this or causing this jellyfish traffic jam. A traffic jam is problems with too much crowding. It's possible that oceans heated by global warming are creating the perfect jellyfish breeding ground, which means a place for jellyfish to be, to be born and grow. Another theory is that overfishing, which is catching, which is fishermen catching too many fish, or people catching too many fish, has decreased the numbers of some fish, which allow the jellies to chow down or eat without competition for food, which is having to fight other fish if they want food. For now, the fishermen, all the fishermen can do is design special nets to try to keep the jellies out. And some of them hope to turn this catastrophic into cash by selling jellyfish snacks, which means make money out of the big problems. Peanut butter and jellyfish, anyone? All right, we're gonna stop and think right there. What are the possible reasons the author gives for why there are so many jellyfish? Think about what we read. Doesn't answer that question. Take a few seconds. All right. One thing that I read in it that, um, that the author gives is that the warm water is making a breeding ground for the jellyfish. Maybe you thought of that too. Maybe you thought about they're not really having too much competition for food as well. All right. 
So we're going to read that story one more time. We are going to reread this story because great readers always reread things to grow their understanding. Before we start, though, if someone were to ask you what the story is about, what would you tell them? Take a few minutes to stop and think about it. If someone were to ask me, I would say this story is about jellyfish that are taking over and making it hard for, for fishermen to get their fish safely. All right, let's start from the beginning. Are aliens attacking the Sea of Japan? Not exactly. These gigantic blobs are unwelcome visitors from another place. Called the Norma's jellyfish, the wiggly pink giants weigh up to 450 pounds, which is 204 kilograms. As heavy as a male lion, and they're swarming by the millions. These supersized sea creatures normally found off the coast of China and North and South Korea occasionally drift east into the Sea of Japan to feed on the tiny organisms called plankton. But now, 100 times the usual number of jellyfish are invading the Japanese waters, and local fishermen are feeling as they are under siege. The fishermen nets are getting weighed down or even broken by hundreds of jellyfish. The jellies crush, slime, and poison valuable fish in their nets, such as tuna and salmon that the fishermen rely on to make a living. No one knows for sure what's causing this jellyfish traffic jam. It's possible that the oceans heated by global warming are creating perfect jelly, jellyfish breeding ground. Another theory is overfishing has decreased the number of fish which allow the jellies to chomp down without competition for food. For now, the fishermen, all they can do is design special nets to try to keep the jellies out. Some of them hope to turn this catastrophic or catastrophe, sorry about that, into cash by selling jellyfish snacks. Peanut butter and jellyfish, anyone? All right, I want you to stop and think. What are some important things to remember from this story? Think about it for a few seconds. You might have a few different things that you were thinking about. Maybe some of your things are that the jellyfish are taking over and it's causing an issue for fishermen. Maybe some things that you're thinking that you really want to remember is that how big these giant these giant jellyfish are and that there isn't much that we can that they can do right now besides make their nets all important things if you see the picture up at the top it says a diver attaches a sensor to norma's jellyfish it will transmit the animal's location and other information and fast facts the baby norm norma's jellyfish changed the size of from of a grain of rice to the size of a washing machine in less than six months. Jellyfish are 95% water. Hmm. Jellyfish aren't actual fish. They're invertebrates, which means they're animals without backbones. I didn't know any of that. Great to learn. Now that you've thought about what the important ideas are from the story, you're gonna have a chance to do it in your own reading. But first, we're going to do vocab. Our first word that we're going to learn today for vocabulary is valuable. Listen to see if you can hear it in the paragraph I'm reading. The fishermen's nets are getting weighed down and even broken by hundreds of jellyfish, and the jellies crush slime and poison valuable fish in their nets, such as the tuna and salmon that the fishermen rely on to make a living. All right. Valuable means very important or worth a lot of money. All right, we're going to play a little game. I'm going to name something, and I want you to think about if it's valuable or not, and use this prompt to help you. I think it is or is not valuable because. All right, a large sailboat. Take a few seconds to stop and think, is a large sailboat valuable or not? Now, some of you might have said, I think it is valuable because it is worth a lot of money or something similar. Let's move on to the next one. Our next word is decrease. Listen for it in the paragraph of our article. 
No one knows for sure what's causing this jellyfish traffic jam. It's possible that oceans heated by global warming are creating the perfect jellyfish breeding ground. Another theory is that overfishing, overfishing has decreased the numbers of some fish, which may allow the jellies to chow down without competition for food. All right, the word we're gonna learn today is decrease. Decrease means smaller or fewer. I'm gonna say that again. Decrease means smaller or fewer. Like that, ice cube is becoming smaller. All right, now we're gonna play, is it decreasing or not? I'm gonna tell you a prompt and I want you to think in your head, I think it is or is not decreasing because. All right, the first one is you turn on the faucet to fill a pot. Is the amount of water in the pot decreasing or, or not? Think for a few minutes, seconds. Is it decreasing or not? All right. I think the water is not decreasing because it's filling up with more water. It's not getting smaller or fewer. The next one is six people get off an elevator and one person gets on. Are the numbers of people in the elevator decreasing or not? I'm gonna read that one more time. Six people get off an elevator, one person gets on. Are the number of people in the elevator decreasing or not? Take a few seconds to think about it. All right. I think that it is decreasing because there are less or fewer people in the elevator than when it started. Okay. Now, for you, for IDR at home, here's what you're gonna do. You can read fiction or nonfiction, but you have to find a book to read. Then I, what I want you to do is really start thinking about what are the important ideas in your story. And be sure to write your response if you have a packet or you could use a regular piece of paper. This today I've read Young, Gifted, and Black. This is a book with lots of different nonfiction stories in it. This is by Jama Wilson. All right, so what I wrote about or what I read about today was Simone Biles. I read that I read that Simone Biles, which I wrote on my piece of paper. So what is the text about? I read about Simone Biles and how she worked really hard to become an Olympic medalist. Number two, what is an important thing to remember from your reading? Well, one thing that I remembered is she's the most decorated female gymnast in all of America, which means she's won the most medals out of all the gymnasts in America. All right, and number three, what are some reasons for why it is important to remember? It is important because it is history and also it makes her very unique to use our vocabulary words. All right, I will show you right up here. If you don't have your packet, feel free just to write the questions and write your answers below. If you don't have books at home, you can go on our the SPS website to find online books. All right, see you later.